Nori Vasconcelos. Ms. Vasconcelos. Do you see any happy faces in here? These people in here worried about how they're going to pay their mortgage, how they're going to catch up their bills, you know. And they look sad because they know today they're probably not going to get the answer to that question. Someone I was just talking to said this case is going on since 2005. Vera Rutherford's carpal tunnel disability case has been lingering in New York State's workers' compensation system. Like thousands of other workers, she's waiting for a resolution. Until then, her life is on hold. Most employees are covered by workers' comp insurance, which pays their medical and wage replacement benefits if they're injured on the job. The workers' compensation system certainly isn't perfect, uh, but it is a system and we have to work within its parameters. New York's system is so adversarial that some cases take years to resolve, and often workers don't receive benefits until then. In the meantime, they struggle to make ends meet. New York State has been, historically, for the past 15 years or so, one of the cheapest states uh, in terms of the monetary awards they pay to the claimants. After workers are injured, they notify their employer and file a claim with the Workers' Compensation Board. But insurers dispute nearly one-fifth of claims and contest many later on. To help guide them through this system, claimants often hire attorneys like Mark Allen. Workers' compensation, for the, for the workers' compensation attorney is, is a volume business because our fees, the way we get paid, is from the, the money or what we call the award to the, to the claimant. But they probably will fight that. I think that you can take the word probably right out of that sentence. <laughs> Vera Rutherford is one of over a hundred of Mark's active clients. I stopped working because uh, of the carpal tunnel syndrome, and I was, I became unable to do the computer work that was associated with the job. After her doctor diagnosed her with carpal tunnel, Ms. Rutherford filed a claim and received payments for $289 a week. But after three months, the insurer had her examined by a doctor of their choosing. And then I saw their doctor who, um, barely examined me, um, but said there was nothing wrong with me. The insurance company's report stated that Ms. Rutherford's disability was not ongoing and she could return to work as a case manager in New York City. But Ms. Rutherford's doctor's report said that she was still suffering from carpal tunnel syndrome. With conflicting doctor's reports, the case entered the trial phase. Then the hearings began. Yeah, the hearings began. This has been going on since then, since 2006. And we go, and I show up, the lawyers show up. We stay there about three minutes. It just drags on and on and on. Is that so unusual for someone whose life it is? It's the day before Ms. Rutherford's fifth appearance before the board over the last 18 months, and she's meeting with Mark Allen to go over her options either take a one-time settlement of $30,000 or go before the judge and hope for a weekly payment for her ongoing disability. The insurance company uh, has made their offer. Their offer is what it is. And if that's not acceptable to us, then we go back to the judge and say, judge. The offer is not enough for her to settle the case. She's been out of work for 18 months. And the only sources of income are her husband's paycheck and a pension from a previous job. Without her income as a case manager, it's become increasingly difficult to pay off credit card debt and the mortgage on their home in Queens. And I've had many people whose marriages have ended, who have lost their homes, who've had to move from the area. Ms. Rutherford is seriously considering moving to Virginia, where the cost of real estate is cheaper than New York City, and where her and her husband could live on a fixed income. In many ways, she's ready to move on, but the lack of resolution in her case has made her very anxious. It just seems to so nonchalantly say, okay, come back in 90 days. They're going to call us in a few minutes, and then we'll talk some more, but I just said to the judge off the record that we want this case to move forward. He said he's ready to make a decision today. Okay? I know that's all we want. Let the chips fall, right? I don't want anything I'm not entitled to. I just want what's fair. But I just want this to be over with, one way or the other. They enter one of a dozen hearing rooms in the Queen's office. 
and emerge six minutes later with a decision. The legal fees, am I going to be happy? Bottom yes, okay. yes you are. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if you'll be thrilled, but you'll be happy. If it's fair, it, it's Well, I'll, tell, I'll, tell, you, I'll tell you everything. Is this over? No, and that's good. That's good. Okay. okay. We don't want it to be. Okay. Beck found to have a mild to moderate disability, and he really took a number right in the middle between a moderate and a mild, and he's saying... Based on a formula of two-thirds her salary times the percentage of her disability, the judge granted Ms. Rutherford a weekly payment of $155, back paid to August of 2006, and ongoing payments as long as she produces medical reports stating she's still disabled and can't work. And what's good about this, what's better about this than anything we discussed yesterday, is that he found that you still have a continuing disability. I, I'm just relieved that this part of it is over. And we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. But I'm one of the lucky ones, because everybody does not have this outcome, unfortunately. But comp cases don't seem to ever end. Three months later, the insurer sent Ms. Rutherford to a doctor of its choosing. That doctor didn't believe she had carpal tunnel syndrome and thought she should be seen by a hand specialist. Mark Allen is fighting to have Ms. Rutherford classified as permanently disabled, which could secure her weekly payments for the rest of her life.